Welcome to the World Ninja League's Gauntlet Tournament. This is the world's most challenging head-to-head -head obstacle race. I'm Kara Mack, your host and lead analyst, and you are about to see eight of the most incredible male athletes as they take on the course in head-to-head -head competition. These athletes are going to be pushed to the brink of their mental and physical abilities as they fly through these obstacles, swinging, sprinting, flying, climbing, all to see who will be the first to make it to the top of Heavenly Ascent. Here to help me introduce these athletes are Henry Ferrarin and Lucio Batista. What's up, guys? Together, the three of us have had a combined total of 22 years coaching obstacle athletes. We've also each been competing at the highest level of obstacle competition for a total of 25 years. So with all that experience spent strategizing, analyzing on the course, we're here to break it down for you, to help you understand just exactly why these athletes are so incredible, and to talk skill, strategy, strength, and to make our predictions on the course. So let's just jump right into it. Hey guys, how's it going? All right, so taking a look at our first bracket, we have a matchup between Joseph Meisner and Ethan Gardulski. Joseph, our returning champion, what do we think? Yeah, absolutely. So first off, we're talking the number one seed, our defending champion, Joseph Meisner, versus the eight seed, Ethan. So, I mean, uh, Ethan had a great run in qualifying, but uh, again, we're looking at our defending champion. This, this athlete is the fastest on the second half of this course. Monstro climb, heavenly ascent, the archangel of heavenly ascent rises to the top. He's so fast on that back half. Um, Joseph's going to be going to be really tough to beat. Now, if you're Ethan in the eighth seed, you just got to really push the pace. Try to make try to go fast enough where where Joseph might make a mistake, might second guess himself, might have to link an obstacle and make a mistake. I don't think that's going to happen, but it is possible. I think Ethan really has to push him. Lucha. Yeah, Joe is really calculated though overall as an athlete. And even I think even if Ethan does try to push him, I still don't think he would make those errors. He's just he just knows what he has to do. He's composed, he's collected, he's always before miming everything he wants to do. He knows down to the second of every single thing. And he usually has a second strategy if he needs to in his back pocket. So typically with Joe, I'm not really too concerned if Ethan tries to do a different strategy against him to try to knock him off his game because he'll just react and just come up with a strategy on the fly and usually keep his composure. With Ethan, I think he's going to just have to stick to one strategy and that's go as fast as he possibly can and get to that buzzer. That's really the strategy that's going to work best for him. We spoke to one of his coaches, Philip. Um, yesterday and he said his strength is grip not so much speed so that's a little bit concerning going into this knowing that he's facing up against Joe Miser who's speed yeah absolutely and and now if you are Joseph your game plan is gonna be I want to get back to the final I want to get back to the championship I want I want a second gauntlet title so can I conserve my energy do I am I gonna go 100% no if I'm Joseph I'm not going 100% I'm going to take my time. I'm going to run my race, see how Ethan runs the course. And then, hey, if I have to go all out, I'll go all out. But maybe maybe I can kind of get through this first round and not burn out all my energy. Because you got to win three races to get this title and call it. Yeah, for sure. And I agree with that. I think Joe is very good at conserving energy and knowing when he needs to push forward and when he can hold it back. So I do think he has a huge advantage in this first matchup. He's going to be able to reserve that energy until the next round. And I think that's going to be really key for him to take home the championship once again. All right, so let's take a look at our second matchup. We've got Tom Alberti versus Keith French. Henry? So I think with this one here, we're going to wind up having a very, very close matchup. I think we're looking at the four or five seed here. Both athletes are very impressive. The only distinction here that I can note is that Tom has done this before in the previous season, um, and Tom's a little bit taller. Other than that, I don't really see too much vary. They're both really fast competitors, very strong and knowledgeable on the course. So I think we're going to see a very close matchup here. Um, I'm giving the nod to Tom Alberti on this one, um, but I really feel like it's going to be very close. I am going to disagree with that. I got my dark horse. Keith French is going to take this W. And I got two main reasons why. One, watching qualifying round, Keith ran the course twice. He full cleared both times, but his first run compared to his second run, his second run was a full, almost a full minute faster. So if he continues those improvements on the course, he's going to be able to beat Tom. Second, he has no fear when it comes to rooftop rumble. He had just attacks that obstacle. I do think it's going to be a really, really close race, but I do have Keith winning that. I mean, my, my second reason, though, is last year I had Tom going really far, 
and he kind of let me down, uh, kind of going out early. So I'm the type of analyst where you got to prove it to me. You got to get it back, and uh, and then you know next year I might pick you. But right now Tom's got to earn it back. Yeah, but I think that's the thing. I think Tom is ready to earn it back. I think he's coming in this with some aggression, and he's like, I need to take this back. Last year he had a few blunders, had some weird falls. I think this year he's ready to really go for it and take it. We'll have to see. All right. Next matchup, we have Jose Josiah Papel and Kevin Carbone. So this is an interesting one because Josiah did really well last season, and we all know that he is a linking god. So I expect to see that from him on the course again. What do you guys think? You are going to have to watch Josiah Papel. He is an amazing athlete in, in qualifying. He literally linked the entire way all the way through to rooftop rumble. This kid did not take one backswing all the way through, the, by far the fastest through to rooftop rumble. So I got to give it to Josiah. Josiah's actually my pick to go all the way this year. I think he's coming in stronger than last year. He got third place last year, um, and now he's ready to go all the way. Yeah. However, though, on that back half is where it's going to really, you know, take take account he he was still one second slower than joe meisner so we'll have to see although he you know he is fast and linking in the beginning of the course we'll have to see how he picks it up on the back half he's gonna have to make up some uh, lost ground there um looking at kevin carbone though he is a seasoned veteran um in obstacle course you know and we'll, we'll have to see how that takes into account he is a little bit older than josiah so we'll see how his gas tank is being a little bit you know if he's going to be able to if he makes it through this round and into future rounds is his gas tank going to pan out will he be able to recover and go into another round another round we've seen it before with a lot of the younger competitors that doesn't affect them too too much they're able to just recover really fast get back out on the next round and just keep going so this is going to be really interesting to see if Josiah really pushes Kevin, how he's re able to react, and if he does advance, how is he going to be able to do in the next round after that? I mean, we all know as seasoned veterans and kind of getting on the older side, the, uh, the more races you do, the more that forearm pump builds up. So we'll see, we'll see how Kevin can do. But I got Josiah winning this one. I'm definitely leaning toward Josiah as well. But I think that... I think the two of them will really play off of each other. If Josiah is really pulling ahead, I think we'll see Kevin really just up his game and try to give it his best shot. I don't think he wants to be left in the dust. That's the thing. So I think Kevin's going to push as hard as he can. All right. And our last matchup between uh, Lance Negrut and Yuri Prokidin. What do you think about this matchup? We have our only international competitor in this matchup. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see um, Yuri's performance out here. He's definitely shown that he's able to use his size his length to his advantage and coming into this co like competition we we didn't know too too much about Yuri and from the qualifying rounds he really proved to us that he's a force out there and just we've seen the speed we've seen the ability the focus he's just very smooth and we were saying he's like smooth like butter out there he's just going through the obstacles like not much hesitation and it's really nice to see so i'm thinking he's going to give lance a real true run for the money but similar to our 5-4 bracket i still think it was going to be close but i think that yuri is going to pull this one off yeah absolutely i think this is going to be a really really great race i think it's gonna be a close one but i was so impressed with yuri our international athlete from russia um not only is he super smooth he's long he's big i mean i mean obviously i'm a fan of the longer bigger athletes at six four but uh yuri yuri really impressed me and it didn't even look like he was going all out in in qualifying so i think he's got i think he's got more i think he's going to really show us what he can do and i think he's here i think he's here to try to win it obviously but um nothing to take away from lance i think he's a really great athlete i was also really impressed with his full clear as well in qualifying but i got i got yuri i got our international athlete winning this one I mean, you mentioned like his length, like I, as I did as well. And it's interesting to comment when we have, you know, the um, obstacle behind us where you could potentially, if you have that reach, go for the cannonball as opposed to what we had to see in previous where yeah, competitors had to actually kick the cannonball to reach for it, which would actually take a little bit extra time. If he could use that to his advantage to shave off one or two seconds, that could be a big deal in a matchup like this. So we'll have to see how that pans out if he tries something like that with that reach. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, exactly. I'm really looking forward to competitors taking more of those risky moves like you were just describing. So I hope we see that. I hope they put it all out there and give it their best. But we're about to see what's going to go down, what's going to happen. So final pick. So who are you saying is going to win it all today? 
All right, so uh, last year I picked Joseph Meisner to go all the way, and he did. He is our defending champion. However, Josiah is coming in looking stronger than ever. Honestly, I wasn't sure, but in qualifying, when he literally linked the entire first four obstacles, no backswing, he linked it all. It was just so amazing to watch. I was like, Josiah is going to win this one. Josiah is going to win this one. So I am so excited to watch. Um, I got Josiah to win to win this year, and uh, it's going to be really interesting. Who's going to attack? Who's going to get to these obstacles first? When these obstacles bottleneck, who's going to attack Rooftop Rumble first? I'm going with Joseph Meisner. He's going to be our two-time defending champ. He's an absolute technician out there, and he will work through each and every obstacle. He's got it down to the second. You'll watch, he'll look at his watch beforehand. He knows exactly how he needs to attack each and, and every- Joseph Link though, can he link the first oh, half? Oh, we saw yesterday, he actually took the opportunity in his second qualifying run. Everybody else did a little goof off, thinking they're funny. What did Joe do? He stepped up there and he actually linked the obstacles to prove that if he needed to do it in his mind, he has it what it takes. And he think, what, you know what? He's gonna take your man down. Josiah's going down. Well, Joseph's down. taking the dub. Hey, I took the W for, for female. We'll see what happens All to right, else. we'll see. I'm going with Lucio on this. I do think Joe is going to take it all again. And the other thing about Joe is that, like he's saying, he's got all the talent. He's got all the tech. He knows how to execute on the course, but he also knows when to hold back. We said this before. So I think he's going to be able to reserve his energy and really completely bring his A game when he needs to. All right, well, we'll find out in just a second. Let's hand it back over to Alex and Will. Thank you, Kara, and welcome to the Gloucester County Fairgrounds for the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. I'm Alex Cunningham alongside William Marchese. We have eight of the top male athletes in our sport ready to take on this course in Will this year. The course is tougher, but the field is stronger. Oh, absolutely, Alex. When we held our qualifiers yesterday, all eight men that you're gonna see today finished the course, which is something that didn't even happen last time. In fact, we had to turn a few of the people who finished the course away. We had more uh, finishers than we had spots. That's to go to show you just how much higher the level of skill the men have this time around. And this course is no joke. New obstacles like the Jersey Jungle and the Python Pit, some obstacles have been made harder too. We hope to show you all of them in this first matchup. It's Joseph Meisner versus Ethan Gardalski, our defending champion, beginning his title defense. Last year, Joe was able to crown himself the champion by going through three brutal rounds of competition. Ethan is a, going to be a tough test for him in this first round. Like I mentioned, everyone cleared the course, so no one should be overlooked. No one should be underestimated. This is going to be a good one, Alex. It certainly is, and Ethan, I talked to him in the warm-up area. He has a plan. I don't want to spoil it, but he has a plan to try to take down our defending champion who low-key just happens to have the course record on this course. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because they're going to be competing head-to-head. -head. So they were everyone able to complete the course, but this is a whole different beast and it starts right now. And we are underway. Ethan knows he needs to get out to the early lead and here come the Lynx. Joe not waiting for Ethan to get off the girder, but oh, takes but an Joe extra swing. Oh, but Joe needs an extra swing. Here goes Ethan. Ethan has not stopped so far. Joe hasn't stopped either. Oh, barely able wow. to move. He slipped a little bit, I'm grabbing a... super low, and he might be the first one to the balance, and here comes his plan. He is. They both jump oh. on the balance. Oh, that was his plan to try to mess up Joe on the balance. This is a head-to-head -head race, but Ethan realizing that he had no other choice, full sent it, and fell there on rooftop rumble. Joe being wow. the sportsman that he out of the pit. And that just goes to show you, this is a head-to-head -head race. Anything can happen in the gauntlet. And there are multiple elements on this course where if there are two people on it at the same time, this course completely changes. That was a very, very bold strategy by Ethan. And if he was there just a little bit sooner, it might've worked. Joe was on his tail 
for almost this entire race heading into the rooftop rumble. He, he, Ethan actually, he had the lead, but he needed like one or two more seconds of a leading in order to really execute that plan. And unfortunately, it didn't work out and it backfired in the worst possible way for him, unfortunately. Yeah, Ethan not able to make it through. And last year, Joe Meisner didn't need to do the whole course on his first go through, ended up winning the tournament. Maybe that comes into play. But we have another matchup here, Tom Alberti versus Keith French. In their qualifiers yesterday, they were only separated by about 5-10 seconds if memory serves. So this is going to be a razor thin matchup. Yeah, it's going to be close. We're going to see if we're going to see any sort of obstacle interaction like we just saw in our first match. The winner of this match faces Joseph in the semifinals. So they have to fight each other first, which will be a tough competition. And then they have to face the champion. So no matter what, this is going to be a hard race. Uh, to the top of the mountain of uh, this entire tournament for all of our competitors. Keith, a gauntlet rookie, but Tom was here a year ago, won the team qualifier, won the open qualifier, got in through the closed qualifier. Actually, I think he was in uh, second in the team, excuse me, but got to the main event, lost to Joe in the first round and fell on boardwalk. So he has quite a bit of revenge today, wants to beat the boardwalk, wants to get out of the first round, and then a rematch with Joe potentially in the semifinals. But here we go with our second race as they stride across road tracks. So will Tom get redemption or is Keith gonna play? Oh no! Well that oh. was a short race. Wow. No one expected that. Keith realizing once, that. Once again, an obstacle that they both interact on was the key difference. That second girder tilts down Tom got there just a little bit quicker, and the movement on the beam is what cost him in that race. Tom gets to take a breather. He only had to do two obstacles, so a little more rested than Joe. Joe didn't have to do too much more, but it could make all the difference heading into their rematch from last year. And Tom still hasn't proven himself on the boardwalk yet in our main event. That is gonna be a very fun semifinal to watch. Obviously, it's a shame we lost Keith French. I think he realized that he was going to have to sell out, and the pressure just kind of got to him. Well, you know what? Like I said, everyone cleared the course yesterday, so everyone knows they're probably going to have to clear the course and clear it fast. And unfortunately, not everyone can handle the pressure, but let's see if these two men can handle the pressure. Two names you should be familiar with at home. Josiah Papel was in third place last year here at the Gauntlet. Kevin Carbone, a gauntlet rookie, but by no means a ninja rookie. He is a longtime veteran of our sports. Kevin has built his name, both helping the community design and build obstacles, but also a great competitor himself. This is true, and I think our analysts all picked Josiah, but we do have people on our staff that picked Kevin. You know so what? These are two incredibly strong ninjas. You know what? You can't you can't underestimate anyone in this race. You know, we just saw two early wipeouts. Anything is possible. This is going to be another great race. Josiah Patel on the bottom of your screen, Kevin Carbone on the top of your screen, and they get it on. Hopefully, this will be the first race that we see go the distance. Uh, let's see how they handle the girder. Kevin gets there first, and he finishes first. Josiah, looks like he wanted to rest there a bit, but Kevin made him go. You know what? People are pushing each other. Josiah got off of the uh, vertical section of the boardwalk first, Ooh. handles the That's rooftop. a little bit scary on the rooftop. Oh, okay. Kevin making a great jump there as they both have to go immediately on the python pit. Wow, they both kick the balls in unison. They are allowed to use their feet to get the cannonball closer to them. This, they are so neck and neck right now. No rest into the monster climb. Holy oh, but cow. Kevin didn't get there. Wow. And now Josiah has a huge lead. <laughs> Kevin essentially hoping that Josiah falls at this point. He realized he made a mistake that cost him in time. And Josiah is on the rope already. Kevin, but he's going to do his best. But notably, Josiah taking his time here, resting a little bit before he starts that rope climb. Hopefully and now that. getting there as Kevin about to get to the rope. Now he's on it. Yeah. And here goes Josiah into the distance. Yeah, and Kevin, he kind of accepts right now that Josiah's going to get there first, unfortunately. There we go. He hits the buzzer. In a course record of 115, which is wow. about 10 seconds of sitting on the rope. Holy cow. You know what? A, a, an excellent effort by Kevin Carbone. That was a faster pace than he's... <laughs> 
That was a faster pace than he was going on in either of his runs in the qualifying yesterday. He was pushing Josiah the entire time. And honestly, if it wasn't for that slip up on getting onto the monster climb, he could have pulled it off. He certainly could have, and he would have definitely made our commentators eat their words. But Josiah, in a very exciting race, is able to hold on. He moves on to face the winner of our next race, Yuri Prakudin and Lance Negroot. Wow, I, I just, Alex, that race, I, I honestly, I love that race so much. They were so close for the first five obstacles, and it just goes to show that with this level of skill, it only takes one mistake to essentially ruin your entire tournament. And that's happened now to three different people. Ethan fell on balance. Keith obviously can do Jersey Jungle, but failed a link. Kevin had a misstep on a rope swing and hopefully not a bad omen for Yuri Prakudin and Lance DeGroot who are on the start line. Lance, our last hope for the Michigan boys. Meanwhile, Yuri, our only international athlete in the field, kind of on a bit of a ninja excursion here in the States. Let's see if he can make a name for himself today. Yuri seemingly came out of nowhere yesterday in our qualifiers and I think turned a lot of heads with his performance. But Lance was very, was very surprising also. Had to sc scratch and claw his way into our bracket. He did a great job recovering from some early mistakes. Uh, I think this is going to be a great race between the two of them. Either one of these athletes can win. They both cleared stage one at Worlds a few months ago in Greensboro. Yeah, this is going to be uh, another good race, and it's going to come down to who makes the first mistake, Alex. Lance opting for long pants. He's at the top of your screen after falling on the rope yesterday in one of his two qualifier runs. You can see he's getting out to a lead here. Yeah, this is a, this is a good start by Lance. He knows how Yuri did yesterday. He knows he's got to push Yuri. He's got to push it to the limit. And he is just, he's staying a good one to two arm lengths Ooh. away from Yuri. A hard bounce on the rooftop rumble. Now using his wingspan to his advantage, but he didn't Ooh. get a good kick there. Yeah. Tried a static, oh, no. and now Yuri has the advantage. That's the mistake that could cost him right there. Yuri takes the lead on the python, but Lance is right behind. Oh, wow. wow. See, Lance getting there faster, and neither of these athletes are letting each other rest on Monster Climb. This is the big jump. Oh. Lance oh. Lance was pushing himself too hard. And Yuri Prakudin, all he needs to do is pull up, touch the rope, and he, he is going to cross to safety. And there you have it, Yuri Prakudin. He has moved on to the semifinals. What a race. These two men were pushing each other so hard. And I, and I think that's going to be a theme today. Yeah. The, these races are lightning fast. Essentially, the at, there's no dictating of the pace. The pace is you have to go way faster than you want to in order to keep up with your other competitor because the other competitor knows that you have that same plan. Well, I mean, it was like I was saying before. The, everyone cleared the course, but they were running it by themselves. When you're competing head-to-head -head with someone, all of a sudden, that desire to go faster is just going to ramp up. And we saw it in all four matches. And all it took was one or two mistakes in every single race to dictate the winner. This is going to be an exciting semifinal, Alex. It certainly is. And to tell you about our two semifinal matchups, let's send it back to Kara Mack, Lucia Batista, and Henry Ferrarin. What an exciting first round. That was incredible. I was like jumping on the edge of my seat, so stoked to watch this. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> we have Joseph Meisner and Ethan Gardulski. So it is what we expected, but at the same time, let's talk about it. Let's go for this. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, Ethan had a game plan and it was to go really, really fast. And unfortunately, uh, came a little short and uh, Joe was able to finish. And uh, this is perfect for Joe to get to that finals because he didn't have to burn any energy. He didn't even have to do his best obstacle, Heavenly Set, his second best obstacle, Monstro Climb. So I never had to happen. Yeah, we, do we talked about this earlier. We knew that that was Ethan's strategy. He had to go super fast. But I also learned in talking to Philip 
that he had another strategy, but it didn't pay off. We saw him try to actually bobble Joseph Meisner off of rooftop rumble, and he, he actually shook himself off. Joe hit that thing so hard with intent, and he just bounced right off, and he took Ethan right out of the competition. So that was a shocker. I mean, that, he had that in his back pocket, and it unfortunately didn't work, and we're going to see that all day today where things like that might happen. Yeah, impressive that he went for it. Uh, because I, you could see it happening. It was like, oh, here we go. What's going to go down right now? And we've been waiting for that, right? To see a matchup go at it right there on Rooftop Rumble. So super fun to watch. But yeah, Joe, Joe just smoked him through that. It was so strong in that jump. All right, so next, moving on to the second matchup, we had Tom Alberti and Keith French. So Lucio and I, were uh, our, <laughs> our prediction was correct here. Uh, super interesting because when they came through the first two obstacles, they were nearly identical. And that was really interesting to watch, again, on a one element of the same obstacle where they were there at the same time, and then we saw what played out. Yeah, it was very interesting to see, I think, the pressure of knowing each other and how fast they, they were going to go. Um, really, like, Keith, when he pulled back, he didn't have enough power on the Lachey Tech, and he shorted the board, when t and Tom was able to make the catch. So it was a really easy win for Tom, which is going to help him big time, because he only had a clear one obstacle to go on and it's really unfortunate because we know how dominant keith is like he's super strong athlete and that just it just happens sometimes yeah and it, it's the nature of the sport i mean in gauntlet you can't really make mental errors but these athletes are pushing right now like this is the best we're going to see right this is so exciting they are going for broke they're going all out right now and you're going to see giant splashes like this you're going to see these mistakes because these athletes are pushing like, like, we have a chance for sub minute on this course, possibly. And it's super exciting. But unfortunately, Keith, he went 100%, full max effort speed, and it didn't work out for him. So congrats to Tom for that matchup. But, I mean, and I missed that one. Rare miss for me. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. I'm excited to talk about this one. Kevin Carbone and Josiah Papel. Again, another matchup where the athletes really seem to be mirroring each other, really in identical movements, identical reaches. That was really impressive, but it came down to Kevin's mistake, really. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that was exciting. Talk about synchronized swimming, synchronized gauntlet. Like, that was amazing. They were in sync for, like, three obstacles, through rooftop rumble, python pit, fully in sync. All the way through MonsterCon, they were literally, they were synchronized swimming it. Um, really, really impressive. And then, uh, and then Kevin goes out and, uh, and uh, Josiah takes that. And um, what I was impressed about, Josiah, because to me, he's the fastest through the beginning. He's the fastest through the first four obstacles. But he looked amazing on Heavenly Ascent. Like, so much faster than last year. Like, he looked like he went and worked the rope climbing. And he looks so much better. So, again, that's my pick to go all the way, Josiah. And I am really excited about that. Yeah, I think that we didn't think this race was going to be as close as it was initially. I think Kevin almost suppressed his energy levels yesterday during the qualifying rounds and really came up big today and showed us what he was made of. And, I mean, going up against Josiah, that was a hard race to have to go up against Josiah for the first round. And, and likewise for Josiah to have to go in his first round against Kevin Carbone. So that was really pushing Josiah like pretty aggressively. And I think he actually got a faster time than he did yesterday yep. by almost maybe over two seconds. And you could see the actual logistics going on in Josiah's mind that he had enough time to stop himself and say, let me hang out on this rope. I don't want to burn out too fast. Let me analyze where Kevin's going, what he's going to do. Maybe he might fall on the, on the mantra climb. Once he touched the rope, just said, all right, time to go. Hit that buzzer and advance. So it's a very impressive thought process there by him. My thought is the way Josiah did that rope, conserving, and still runs a 115. He still ran a 115, and he was going maybe, what, 80% on the rope? And then he showed us what he can really do for the end of that. Really impressive. Uh, yeah, if that was 80% on the rope, I'd love to see 100% because he still went very fast through the rope and had great technique. I was impressed, definitely, especially comparing to last season. I, I'm seeing a new and improved Josiah this year for sure. Um, I am curious how it's going to play into the next round for Josiah because, correct me if I'm wrong, is he the only athlete now who's climbed the rope today in the first round? Yeah. Yes. Right, yeah, so he's the only one who's gone through the entire course. So. He'll get some rest now. Hopefully, he'll be ready to take it on again. All right, and then our last matchup between Lance and Yuri. How do we? What were our expectations for that one, and how did it play out? So there's only way to describe this one is just pedal to the metal. These two athletes have no breaks. 
Like they just hit every single obstacle back to back to back. They were just going fast. Like it was a sprint. Like, like Usain Bolt was chasing them or something. It was wild how fast they were going. And like, even like pacing, like they were just so even the whole way through all the way to Montreal climb where it just came down to just, it looked like potentially an error on Lance's part on the grab. Yeah, to me, what a race, by the way, because I, I was like, oh my God, this is back, and this is really close. But the one error to me was when Lance tried to static on Python Pit. He tried to static grab, missed it, and then Yuri's like, all right, this is my opportunity. Yuri took the lead, and then it, the lead never changed at that point. Like, that was it after that. Yuri was able to finish up, didn't even need to go, hem go through Heavenly Ascent. And smart, really wise, against presence of mind of these athletes, knowing they have to win three in a row to, to be crowned gauntlet champion, got right off the obstacle to rest up for the next round. Yeah, very impressed by Yuri's mindset as well, because he really stayed focused on his own race. You could tell that in the lane next to him, that error did not seem to sway him at all. He just kept going and it paid off. So awesome. All right, an incredible first round. We're looking forward to the next round. Let's hand it back off to Alex and Will. Thank you, Kara, and welcome back into the commentary booth. I'm Alex Cunningham. He's William Marchese. That's a tractor. Never mind. And Will, I was just thinking during that break with the analysts, the dichotomy of the course is completely different this year. Yeah, we're getting a lot more interaction between the competitors this time around. And that has played a huge factor in our races so far, especially at uh, spots two and four. The uh, Jersey Jungle with that second girder and just the entire rooftop rumble, as we saw a few times, actually. Yeah, and there really isn't resting strategy. It's just go. Yeah. And now it's, uh, let's see, speaking of just go, we got a rematch from last year. Joseph Meisner, the defending champion against one of the men he defeated last year, Tom Alberti, the, who is now determined to take the championship himself. Yeah, we had chalk in the first round. All four of the top seeds won, and at this point, I feel like anyone can beat anyone. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's been like that this entire tournament. Anyone can beat anyone. I would not be surprised if Tom won. I won't be surprised if Joseph won. This is going to go, I think, to the finish. I think we're going to see a buzzer this time. Well, that would certainly make Tom happier. He fell on boardwalk last year in this matchup. Last year, quarterfinal. This year, a semifinal. And the semifinals are underway. Pretty even so far out of the road flares. And almost. Oh, and they're linking. Out. They're linking, and they are not phased by that similarly tilting burger on Jersey Jungle. This yeah, time for the is vertical. the scene of the crime. But Tom gets it this year. Joe obviously gets it. He's gotten it a number of times before, and Tom makes the dismount. He is first on to balance, and Ops to use both ropes. That is legal. Hold on, folks. Joe finally getting it after the ropes steady, and now Tom has built a huge lead. Yes. Joe a little bit slow in hitting the cannonball there. It's kind of surprising. Tom did not take a lot of rest to get into the monster climb. He but knows. he did get a little bit of rest. Joe's yeah. going to get none. And Tom already has the biggest gap. And now it is on the rope. This the title risk. defense could be over just like that. But here Ooh. comes the champ. We've got a race, folks, on the rope. The mission is simple. Get the buzzer at the top of the rope. Who is going to ascend and be the archangel of this race? Tom has to hurry there, neck and neck. Oh, Joe closed the gap and he's taking the lead. There we go. And Joe Meiser finishes in 111. Holy cow. A new course record again. And Tom Alberti falls to Joe Meiser for the second year in a row. If there's any consolation, he'll at least get a buzz for Gunner to the Josiah Pinkel foot tap. You know what, Alex? History may repeat itself in terms of who won, but Tom made Joe work for it this time. It was a much better race than last year, that's for sure. And once again, Joe Meisner showing us he is the king of that rope. He can get up that rope faster than anyone else. And he, he made a couple of comebacks on that rope last year. Nothing like what he's just done. Yeah, Tom had the lead for pretty much the entire this race, especially coming off of the boardwalk. And Joe even made a mistake or two, especially trying to reach that cannonball on the python pit. But it was not enough to deter the champ. And now we're going to see who's going to join Joe in the grand finals. Well, Josiah and Yuri should be a little bit happy with what's just happened as uh, Joe and Tom await them at the top of the tower. 
uh, because they Joe has just shown even with that course record, he looked beatable. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. Both Josiah and Yuri were impressive in both their first round and the qualifier yesterday. This is going to be potentially another buzzer beater for the two of them. And the winner is going to face Joe. The loser is going to face Tom in our bronze medal playoff. We will have a bronze medal match in the medal round. But for now, it's Josiah and Yuri. A little USA versus Europe action. Who will meet Joe Miser in the final? And we're about to find out. Josiah was in the medal round last year, hoping to be in the gold medal match this year. And they are neck and neck in the Jersey jungle. Josiah once again opting to link the entire front half of the, ooh, he's actually had a misstep and now Yuri has taken the lead. Wow, it's amazing how just a single backswing can be a mistake at this point. Very low on the rope with Yuri, much cleaner is Josiah. Josiah a little bit of chalk before perfect, the Python hit. Perfect kick and grab from Yuri. Josiah a weak kick. Oh no. Josiah is getting caught up and Yuri has opted to take no rest. He is after that course record. Uh, it is amazing. The men had so much difficulty on the monster swing this last year, and they, everyone has made it look so easy. Yuri is already on the rope. We're only 47 seconds in. But he had a little bit of a an issue getting onto the rope. We know Josiah is very skilled at this rope. He has that inner thigh technique, and now he is starting to catch up on Yuri. He's only a length away. Can Yuri handle the vertical section? But Yuri only a couple pulls, and here comes Josiah. Josiah Yuri wins! Yuri has the buzzer in a new course record of 108. Oh my god! Like, this is unbelievable! This Josiah taking a little bit longer only because he didn't hit the buzzer hard enough to actually finish. That was a nail biter of a race, Alex. I that that could have gone either way, all the way until the end, but Yuri is their second man making it into the grand finals. It's going to be the champion Joe Meisner versus Yuri, who both put in new course records one after another. Just two seconds uh, put each other apart. This is going to be a dash to the finish till the very end for the grand finals Don't here. Don't blink and you'll miss this final, but I want to bring attention to uh, the Python pit because jo that's where Josiah lost time. Yeah, that was a big mistake. It, it's kind of crazy how throughout this entire tournament, just the smallest mistakes can cost you an entire run. It's, 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 it's almost unheard of, especially compared to last year. Like we said at the beginning of this race, we, this tournament, we said how much higher the skill level is. This is even higher than I expected. I couldn't agree more. And our analysts have a lot to talk about about this upcoming medal round. Let's send it back to Karen and the boys. Wow, I am blown away by what we just saw. There were a lot of surprises in those last matchups. We're gonna get into it all because that was intense, seriously. Okay, so now we're coming to the championship between Joe and Yuri, not what we expected at all. So I definitely wanna go back and talk a little bit about those matchups that we just watched before we get into the matchup that's coming up. So let's start off with Tom and Joe. One thing that I noticed is that Tom was really pushing it. He was like, nah, like here I come. Here I'm pushing ahead and I was impressed by just how much like unction he had just pushing forward over and over through every single move and Joe really seemed to stay level-headed stuck to his plan until I'm sure we'll talk about this right now until in those last few moves when Tom was pulling ahead and Joe really needed to turn up the heat there so what'd you guys take on it? Yeah, like honestly we discussed it before Joseph is a technician. He did not get phase that Tom was ahead of him. He kept his composure the entire way through. He said, I'm going to get this. I know what I have to do to get to that rope and take Tom down. And that's exactly what we saw. Tom fumbled on the rope and Joseph touched that rope. And within a blink of an eye, he caught Tom and then hit that buzzer. It was impressive. Absolutely. But what a race. Tom did what he had to do. He got ahead. He was way ahead. But again, again, I'm gonna nickname him the Archangel because he is so good at heavenly ascent. He was losing to the last obstacle. He was behind. And then Joseph Meisner just turns on that NOS, that nitro, presses that nitro button and just flies up heavenly ascent. 
come but come from behind victory and actually by a good amount yeah. but really really impressive so amazing that what a, what an amazing race yeah we're actually starting to see athletes from pushing that time that we saw in qualifying round edging it closer and closer and closer to that minute mark we might see a sub minute two course time records in a row. yeah two course records in a row exactly very impressive runs out there for sure all right and so then the, the matchup that really surprised me, the the race we just saw between Josiah and Yuri, that was incredible. And now we're, I feel like we're really seeing Yuri get comfortable on the course and own it. And Josiah did have a few slip ups there that I think slowed him down, some missed reaches, that sort of thing. Uh, but Yuri was just, just pushed through and that was impressive. And let I'm, I want you, Henry, to talk about this rope climb because there's just nothing like that. Absolutely, and, and what, a, what a race. I mean, it, it really came down to it, but um, I mean, Josiah, amazing job. And again, I think the crux move to me actually is Python Pit is how are you grabbing that cannonball? Because it's really out of reach for most people to static. And if you mess up that kick technique, which unfortunately happened to Josiah, he lost like four seconds. He lost like four seconds trying. Yuri took the lead, but hey, I wish I had a, a Russian flag right now to wave around. I'm Team Yuri right now. I'm going to switch it to Team Yuri to go all the way right now. I am so impressed with that kid. And just like you said, Kara, he's getting more and more comfortable on this course as he goes. And such an impressive race. It came down to, heaven, to Heavenly Ascent. And wow, that was so amazing to watch. You know why he's got to switch teams, Kara? It's because his, his pick lost. lost. His oh, man, that's unfortunate, Henry. But it uh, looks like... Karen and I are moving on with Joe Meisner. It's unfortunate, but it's okay. You get it next year. Um, but I would also like to make mention that with that race, it was very, I think it really, what mattered most was that Kevin Carbone pushed Josiah hard, hard. Even though he had a break on that rope at the end, he still had to get to the rope. Joe Meisner did not have to do that. So in his race, it wasn't as big of a factor. Josiah did look a little bit tired having to push as hard to catch Yuri and then also continue to get ahead of him on the rope. So I think that was a huge factor for him. I'd also like to go back and note that in the race we saw with Joe Meisner and Tom Alberti, we saw Tom do a very interesting move that we haven't seen yet. He actually, when he went off of Rumbling Rooftop, he grabbed both ropes and he swung them hard on the throwback to try to throw Meisner off. And like we said, Meisner is so calculated that not even that trickery from Tom Alberti threw him off. He was able to still catch him and still dominate down the road. So very impressive run from our athletes so far. Yeah, so championship, it's gonna be Yuri versus the defending champion, Joseph Meisner. I mean, I'm gonna go with Team Russian. I'm going, I'm going with Yuri to, to try to do this. But uh, I think it's gonna be an amazing race. Really, really, really amazing race. Again, keys to victory. Um, Joseph is by far the fastest on the road on Heavenly Ascent, fast through Monster Prime. Yuri's looking really good though. So if Yuri can keep stepping it up. Now let's remember, Joseph set a course record and then Yuri set another course record. So, so technically Yuri has the fastest time on the course right now. So if you go by time, Yuri's the faster athlete. But head to head, we're gonna see what happens. That's pretty impressive. That's a really good point. I, I hadn't considered that fastest time that he just set. Yeah, that, that's really impressive. We're going to have to see how it plays out. I am still going to go with Joe. I think that Joe has seen now what Yuri is capable of, and Joe knows that he needs to turn it up like right away because no one is, is taking it easy <laughs> through those first few obstacles. They're going to just blast through immediately. Yeah, and we haven't yet seen Joe actually do the links. So I think this is where he takes that to that next level, and he's going to say, you know what, the first two I only had to do about 95%. Now I need to turn that dial all the way up to 100. We're going to probably see Joe open that NAS, go for 100%, start making those links, do what he has to do to dominate. He saw what Yuri could do there. Both of them are pretty even keel right now because they both had to go all the way up the rope. But Joseph did have a little bit of extra rest going in the first, first run before Yuri. So that might be a little bit of a calculated factor there. But I still have to say I'm going with Joe Meisner for the win. This way Henry loses two in a row which would be an amazing thing for me. And, uh, and, the, and the last note is that um, Joseph's been here before. Joseph's been to the championship round. He's defending his title. This is Yuri's first time here, and now he's in the championship. Can he handle the pressure? I think he can, and we're gonna find out. It's gonna be pretty amazing.
Yeah, we're going to see who wants it more, who is ready to take on that pressure, like we said, and who still has the energy to give it absolutely their all. So I'm really excited. All right, so let's watch this championship. I cannot wait to see. Let's hand it back over to Alex and Will. Thank you, Kara and Will. It is time for the medal rounds. I, I'm out of words. I know they pay me to say them, but this has just been such an incredible experience so far. It's been great. Unfortunately, they pay me more to say words. So I'll say this, <laughs> that no matter what, everyone who gets on the podium today deserved it and certainly earned it. These have been some of the best races in the history of Gauntlet. And all four men that are competing in both the bronze and the gold uh, medal matches, they have their works cut out for them. That's certainly true. And we're going to see who between jo uh, Josiah Papel and Tom Alberti is going to finish on the podium in our bronze medal match. But just so we can give them a little bit of a rest, obviously, you you've seen they've been working super hard on this course. We're going to throw to a little bit of a break just to thank our sponsors who made this all possible. And we will see you very soon here from the Gauntlet. The Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge is brought to you by Ninja Works, the ultimate in ninja timing systems. Goliathon. It's not a race, it's a mission. Send City Academy, hoping you reach your full potential in ninja. Monstro Ninja Holds. Go bigger, go Monstro. And our thanks to Imagine Ninja Productions, a full-service videography, photography, and production team. Welcome back to Gloucester County Fairgrounds, where it is time for the medal round of the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. We start with the bronze medal race. Our bronze medalist last year, Josiah Papel, in the top lane. Tom Alberti out in the first round a year ago, but has shown so much improvement since last year. He is also fighting for that bronze medal. You know, it, it almost doesn't seem fair to say that neither man actually wants to be here. They were both gunning for that top spot to get into the grand finals. But now that they unfortunately failed to achieve that goal, they are going to go all out so they can get on the podium. Josiah hopefully is willing to accept uh, a repeat bronze medalist. Tom wants to put a nice little stamp on his weekend, uh, showing that he did improve from last year more than just uh, than he did so far. And I think this is going to be a good race. They gave our two finalists a run for their money, and now they're going to test each other once again. By the way, Josiah, ever the uh, F1 fan, he is honoring the recently retiring Sebastian Vettel. Just announced it today. Just wanted to bring a little bit of an attention to that as he is already in the lead, gliding through Jersey Jungle. And they dismount almost at the wow. exact same time. They almost ran into each other, and now yeah. Tom is doing this boardwalk even faster, but Josiah is able to get the link on the vertical side. Wow, it, once again, the fact that like a backswing can cost you time is amazing. <laughs> Certainly true in this year's gauntlet. Oh, Tom misses the kick this time, but are, goes wow! for it anyway. A huge move, opting to just send Holy it. Holy cow. And, and now he might be in the lead. Right. You know Josiah is going to be in the lead by 19 hundredths. But he got caught up on Monstro Climb. Oh my gosh. What, what just happened? I didn't see. What? Oh my goodness. Oh. Josiah oh. Out. Something Some, just happened here. Something, yeah. something. He must have ripped or pulled Josiah. something. Josiah is not happy about his hands. He decided, you know what? Better, better to live and fight another day. Uh, we're going to have to hear from him to find out exactly what happened. But Tom, ecstatic right now. He is able to get on the podium claim third place, and what an improvement from last year for Mr. Tom Alberti. Such a tough break for Josiah. Two finishes, but I mean, these athletes know their bodies so well, so whatever happened to Josiah, he knew it immediately and got off to avoid risking further injury. It's a shame to see the third place match end that way, but we know that we're in for a barn burner in our gold medal match. You know what, you gotta respect the move. You know, sometimes you might, people wanna win, obviously. Right. But sometimes you gotta do the right thing. And I imagine Josiah, he saw what was happening to his body and he knew the right thing was to just call it there, uh, concede the win to Tom. And I respect Josiah for that decision. It's so weird to say that Josiah finished this course twice in basically record time and didn't finish on the podium but that's just the nature of this year's gauntlet competition 
you have to work harder than you've ever worked before. It, it's been incredible so far. And the fact that we still have one more race of the two best racers so far is, got me very excited. All right, I'm not gonna ask you who's gonna win because I think I know who your pick is. The <laughs> question here is, are we gonna see sub one? Yes. Calling okay. you, I'm calling you right now. I, I mean, both these guys, they basically did it like what? It was a minute 10, minute eight between the two of them. Something like that. Yeah. They're going to push each other that much harder to go even faster. If we don't see a burnout, we're seeing sub minute. Joseph Meisner, the defending champion, Yuri Prokudin, the gauntlet rookie, looking to put himself on the map in the biggest way possible by winning the gauntlet pro obstacle challenge. And, and I mean, this course has been no joke, but these two so far today in this tournament have almost made it look like a joke with how flawless they've been. But we are about to get it on, folks. Who will be the gauntlet champion? We're about to find out. The start cue goes off, and away we go. Joe Meisner, a little bit of a lead early. Onto the Jersey Jungle. Let's see how they handle the second quarter at the same time, basically. But look at that. Uh, Joseph taking the backswing, and we've noted backswings can cost you on this But he's course. on the vertical portion first. They both take the backswing. Joe has a slight lead on Yuri. Bouncing Ooh. off of the rooftop Joe rumble. just showing his power right now and that is giving him a huge advantage, but Yuri has been dominant on this obstacle so far. Oh, a small kick from Yuri. Oh no, he's got hung, he's hung up. He's yeah. hung up on the python pit. He can't get back. He can't get to the cannonball. Yeah. He's been so excellent on the python pit all weekend, but Joe, but Joe Meisner going off into the distance. Oh man, what a heartbreaker for Yuri. Now he needs a miracle on the heavenly ascent. To, in order to win this race. Joe starting his climb already, but Yuri is blasting through the monster climb, trying his best to get onto that rope as soon as possible, and there he is. But Joe Meisner may already have this in the bag by the time I'm finished saying this. Joe Meisner successfully defends the Gauntlet Championship, and indeed in a record time of 107. Once again, Alex, only one mistake. It came down to one mistake on the Python pit. It cost Yuri dearly, unfortunately for him. But what an amazing run that this rookie has had. And what I like right now is that the competitors that have been eliminated, even Joe the Public Power, are encouraging Yuri to finish. There, there's no teams, really no nationalities in this sport. It's all one team, and that is other on to finish strong. Great show of sportsmanship there. As once again, Joe Meisner stands on top of the tower, victorious in the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. And I just want to point out, new course record, 107.15. That beats Yuri's previous 108. I wonder if Yuri had gotten to that rope faster, if he might have had to push a little more on that rope. But he did what he needed to do, got the 107, the new course record, and we've seen a successful title defense. Joe Meisner, 6-0 in head-to-head -head competition on golf. You know, you mentioned about, uh, you mentioned about the, with, if uh, Joe would have had to push even harder on the rope. And unfortunately, that question is a lot like getting to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop. The world may never know. But the world does know who our gauntlet champion is. For William Marchese, I'm Alex Cunningham, and we're going to set it up to Greg Schwartz to give the trophy once again to Joe Meisner. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight grueling races, we have a winner. Once again, in the nearly 100 degree temperatures, you're still Grand champion of the gauntlet, Joe Meissner! Congratulations, Joe. Celebrate your glory, but not for too long, because soon enough, the gauntlet will demand you defend the title and ascend to these heights again. So before we go, let's head down to our analysts for some final thoughts.
outstanding. That's all I got to say it is absolutely amazing. These matchups that we just saw, what an incredible championship and the bronze matchup as well. So exciting, so much energy, so much power. And again, two words, Python pit, right? So much of the crux points, like we've mentioned, have come down to Python pit and we saw it again in these two matchups. Really incredible. So where should we start? Let's back it up for a second and start with the bronze matchup between Josiah and Tom. Yeah, absolutely. And, and wow, and, and again, you just alluded to it. This Python pit uh, being this crux, and what a crux is, is the hardest move in an obstacle. Um, and that's grabbing that cannonball. And now this bronze medal match, what a race between these two athletes, Josiah and Tom Alberti. And um, Tom actually missed, he messed up his kick. But then something we didn't see all day, he lashed straight to the cannonball. And then I, in, my, in like my expertise, if you lashed to a cannonball, you have no more momentum, so you lost your swing. Yet he still had the core strength to build swing and do a giant pull-up to grab that next doorknob and get through and actually win that race. Now, Josiah, I think he might have, Tom was way ahead regardless, but I think Josiah might have got a huge rip on his hand. I think that's why he had to kind of pull out of that. But wow, Tom, very, very impressed. Yeah, absolutely. What an amazing bronze medal run. That was an absolutely incredible, like they're pushing each other to the limit literally to the point of skin coming off of hands and having to be forced to make obscene moves on the course. So it's a very impressive job by all of the competitors so far today. Yeah, we knew coming down to these four athletes that it was going to be quite the sight to see and I was not disappointed one bit. And I gotta also say with that move we were just talking about with Tom Alberti, being able to think on the fly like that, you tried your first strategy, which is the strategy that I believe he'd been using this entire time, and to instantly know that didn't work, I'm going to plan B. I don't even know if that was his plan B, but he pulled it out and nailed it immediately and was able to take the lead. So yes, kudos, so good. All right, so let's go on to our championship matchup, Joe and Yuri. That was another really exciting one with so many moments that I didn't know what to expect because they were so close for so long, but then Joe, again, pulled ahead in the lead. I'll have to take the lead on this one, Kara, sorry. Uh, I mean, Henry did take the W in our female bracket, but gotta say, got my first dub and it feels really good today. Picking Joseph Meisner was a really solid choice today. Um, we were talking about it earlier, he's a technician out there. I'll just say it once and twice, three times again. He is, he just knows how to deliver. I called it before, we saw him, he wasn't going 100%, and then you saw it on this course, he was just moving. He put it in a whole nother gear, cranked it through, and the minute he touched that rope, it was game over. We knew it from the start. Wow, what a race. And talk about a tournament. When you have course record, course record, course, four course records in a row, these athletes got faster and faster and faster, and then our two-time champion, another course record, I believe 107, Yuri's last run was 108. Oh my God, that was insane. But really quick, just to highlight what, what happened in that race. And again, it was Python Pit. Yuri, I mean, they were pretty much neck and neck. And Yuri kind of went for that beta of kicking that cannibal to bring it closer on the next swing. Did not kick it hard enough, it looked like. Went out to reach it and missed it. And then it was over after that because, again, the Archangel is way too good at Heavenly Ascent. Yuri tried to catch up, but it was not happening. And I got to give it to Joseph Bowser. I picked him last year. I kind of wanted to mix it up and go with someone else this year. I was horribly wrong. And I will not make that mistake again, Joseph Bowser. Amazing job. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it goes without saying, like, that crux point has proven itself throughout the day. It's just really taken out a lot of competitors. Because it it's not that easy. Like, unless you had, like, a massively large reach and just able to get that cannonball, it makes it very difficult to perceive how the athlete's gonna go for that move. So big kudos to both Yuri and Joseph Meisner in that race pushing each other. And Joe earlier, he was talking to us outside and he actually made mention that he thought he could do a 107 run. The fact that he calculated it down and then executed a 107 run is like mind blowing amount of like thought process that he had it down to that science 
Yeah, and that just goes to show you. It's what we talked about in the very beginning. Joe knows his skill. He knows his strategy. He knows exactly what he's capable of, and he's not afraid to trust himself in that. I think that's a huge difference between the athletes who come out on top and the ones who have some sort of error or something is the athletes who really know themselves and can trust their plan and go for it. So um, I just want to, like, mention uh, real quick with my other analysts, I want to publicly call out all the rest of the community here and say, I don't think you guys have what it takes to beat Joseph Meisner here at the gauntlet. If you think you have what it takes, show up and put up. And the same thing with the female athletes. Ava, Joseph Meisner, two-time champion. Ava Colasanti, two-time champion. Where are you guys Ava. at? You Where are you Ava. obstacle athletes at? We need some more talent to challenge these two. Seriously, they're gonna go three in a row, four in a row. Let's go. Don't be scared, let's see it. Come here. All right, and last words. Um, I think I'm the only one who who got both of my picks, all right? I just need to brag for a second, all right? I've been sitting here listening to these two, and I heard all of your insight, I'm taking it in, I've got my own strategy here, and I'm the only one who got both my picks in top place, all right? <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. I think that about wraps it up for us. Thank you so much for joining us here in Mullica Hill at the Gloucester County Fairgrounds. This has been the World Ninja League's Gauntlet Tournament. See you next time.